Greetings everyone and welcome back to yet again another video. This one is a continuation of a previous video that I did, so if you have not seen that, you might want to click up here first to see that video before you continue on with this, because you might think, what the hell's going on? That video was part one, this is part two, so let's get into it. In the previous episode, we had a look at this. The Goofone Samsung Galaxy S7 clone thing... yep. There it is. And, well, you know, it wasn't the greatest. However, two years ago, to this day that I'm recording, which is the 16th of the 3rd, 2020, I bought two random generic smartphones off of eBay. Let me tell you a little bit about that. So that's two years ago, browsing eBay, randomly, whatever, came across two phones. I don't have any pictures of the listing, nothing. No messages from the guy, nada, all gone. But I remember that he had them for 60 bucks each and it was pickup only. This guy had these phones as brand new, never used, for 60 bucks. And so I said, I'll offer you 50 bucks for them and I'll meet you close to your pickup destination. I believe we went back and forth through the messages quite a bit to organize the location and all that sort of stuff, but eventually, 50 bucks each, I met him at the location, he drove up in a station wagon, he opened the back of the car and just pulled a sheet over what was concealed in the back of his car and in there, was just all of these blue boxes. And I sort of went, what's going on here? And he said, there's a company that's shutting down and they had 5,000 of these phones. They're just trying to get rid of them and he's the person that's trying to get rid of them. Well, that company is Explore, X-P-L-O-R. And that company still exists. It's a software company based in Melbourne and it kind of makes sense that they would have customized devices for them, but I really don't know, to be honest. And that's why today we're going to be exploring the Explore phone and exploring its exploration. And also, I actually filmed a full review on this certain device. And I'll splice in some footage here for you. This blue box says 943G smartphone and Android. That's it. Um, 943 on the side. Smartphone. <laughs> you can hear the contents moving around in there. So that was in 2018, I had slightly improved my setup, I was starting to get a little bit more comfortable on camera, well, behind the camera, and I'd done a full review on this, and it lasted 16 minutes, I think. My reviews don't last 16 minutes anymore, unfortunately. I did the review on the gold one back then, I'm going to be doing a review on the black one today. But let me go ahead and show you the devices. Presenting smartphone, Android, it's pretty self-explanatory to be fairly honest. Uh, 910B, 943G. G for gold, B for black, that's item number 910, and this is item number 943. I just picked the two random ones that were in the back of his car, and that's what I got. Anyways, uh, box-wise, 910. Smartphone. Smartphone. That's a wonderful box. Same thing with this one. Smartphone, nothing. Smartphone, nothing. Number. That's it. Very, very bare bones, but if we open them up, we have two devices. Our black one and gold one. And that's literally it. There's nothing else in here. It's just all plastic and bubble wrap and stuff. That's it. That is the fastest unboxing experience you will ever see on this channel. I certainly promise that. So in part one of this little series, I had a look at the Goofone S7. This is not the Goofone S7. This is the Explore. I'll get back to this very soon. We've got our light sensors, and earpiece, and camera, which is just a little tiny one, nothing special. We have our menu, recents, options, whatever you want to call it, back key, and our home key. I think this has a fake fingerprint sensor, but I can't really remember, because it was two years ago to this day, that I bought them and did the review on that same day. Yeah, it doesn't sound that good, but the back of the phone is nice and gold. It's actually quite nice to be honest. We've got our rear camera there and we do have our flash as well as some sensors by the looks of it. But we've got Explore just printed on there. At the bottom of the device we have speaker grills, microphone hole, micro USB port, headphone jack, antenna bands, volume rockers, the SIM tray, secondary microphone which I think actually does work. And then we have our power button. And yes, this device is ripping off the Galaxy S7. However, this has slightly different features than the Goofone, and I'm going to go over them. Alrighty, so in our lineup, we have the Goofone S7, we have the Explore S7, and we have an actual S7. So let's put them all 
together like so. At the top, the Goo phone is all plastic as we seen in part one. The Explore phone actually has a metal body and the S7 has the aluminum frame, but button placement is pretty much good on all of them. Thickness of all of them and the micro USB placement is pretty solid on all of them. The Explore phone has the micro USB port just slightly up, but the Goo phone has it down as well as on the real deal as well. You can see all the antenna bands, they pretty much line up. Power button location is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, maybe give or take a little bit. And the top, we have the SIM trays and all the microphone holes and stuff. The backs of them, as we see, pure plastic. Then we get an upgrade to shiny plastic. But it looks nice though. And of course you can see the curves in it, like the real deal, which is nice. It looks a little bit more premium than the uh, Goo Phone one. The most important change from the Goo Phone to the real deal. So on the Goo Phone, there is no glass curvature. It's just, as I said in the previous video, flat as a tack. But on the Explore one, the glass is ever so slightly curved. Might be able to see it a little better there, but it just slightly curves. It's very minimal, but it does curve. On the real deal, you can just see the ever so slight curve that's going on. But that's really the only difference. Weight-wise, body-wise, and screen size as well is more close to the S7 than the Goo Phone is. So that's just disregarded for now. And we put these side by side. And yeah, there's not too much of a difference to be fairly honest, except the fingerprints. That's why I got the Explore Phone in a different color. I also got it in black. Black Sapphire, I think they called it, something like that. But it's very close to the real deal. The screen size is exactly the same. Button placement, you can't see the keys though, but on the real deal, you can see the um, sub keys. You can just see the highlights of them. The buttons, the real S7 is quieter. That does make a bit of an audible click. As I said, the screen size is exactly the same. That's an AMOLED panel. That's just an LCD. The metal body, everything. It's just that this has a plastic back and this is glass. But otherwise, if it didn't have Explore on it and they printed Samsung on it, you'd be mistaken for thinking it's an actual S7. All right, so this is the SIM tray on the Goo Phone. It looks like it's made of metal, but it's not, it's just plastic. The second one here is out of the Explore Phone, ever so slightly different, but it's just all plastic. And then we have the real S7 SIM tray, which as you can see, is uh, considerably longer than the rest of them. So that's why it doesn't fit. So there's one thing on this device that's very different from any other device, is that you can unbrand this device in just a matter of seconds. Allow me to show you. See the Explore logo? Now you don't. Unfortunately, I can't do it to the back one, but the front one is now unbranded. So you can put a Samsung sticker if you want to. It's up to you, or you could write your own logo. That's what Explore did. They just put their own logo on there. Is that even a logo? It's just font. Now, as for the gold one, I'm not going to be reviewing that one. I'll be reviewing this one, um, only because I've already taken the gold one apart, but I cannot remember the specs of it. I haven't watched that video since I made it two years ago, so I have no idea what was said or done in that video. But anyways, I've put a SIM card and an SD card in here, so let's go ahead and explore the Explore phone. I just love saying that, it's just funny. Looks like Marshmallow, doesn't it? I actually think it is Marshmallow by memory. Okay, so the Explore phone has booted up into a setup screen, which is good. It's something that you usually don't see on most clones. Anyways, we'll turn the Wi-Fi on, see the keyboard, that's looking very close to Samsung now, isn't it? Compared to the Goo Phone. Okay, we have set wake up command. S voice will help you do that. Okay, well, we'll set that up. Okay, perhaps we won't. We'll just do later. What, that goes, oh, hang on, what, what? All right, we'll just do set, easy mode. Okay, well, um, done, I guess. Is that it? That's it. Network connection failed. Well, there you go, we're booted up anyways. As you can see, this looks like more of a faithful port of the Android 6 TouchWiz experience. It's pretty good. Swiping along. Oh, there's even, um, what is it called? Flipboard briefing. Yeah, the thing that no one ever used. All right, well, yeah, going into apps. It's not a lot going on, but we've got a couple of apps we can check out. Usually I connect my Wi-Fi much later on, but I figured I may as well just do it now, get it over and done with. So anyways, on the main screen here, we have Google search bar, email, camera, gallery, calendar, phone, messaging, browser. Don't know why I opened browser, but it's not a Samsung browser. There's Libero, TripAdvisor, Republic of IT. What? What's, what's, that? what's that one? I don't really know what's going on. Oh, okay. Can anyone tell me in the comments what that is? 
I think it's like... It's not Daiso, is it? No, it's not Daiso, because I went to Daiso when I was over in Japan. I'm guessing it's Japanese. Looks like it. Oh, anyways, that's there. Um, calendar, let's just see what calendar looks like. That looks more like it. Unlike the Goo phone, that didn't look anything like it. Google, we have Chrome, Maps, Voice Search, Google Settings, and Google. Android, we have Email, Browser, My Files, Sound Recorder, Video, and File Manager. Wait, Font Manager? What the? Okay, um, you can change the font to Isu, or Box, or Flowers, or Glint. You can actually just install random ass fonts on here? Really? This calls for an investigation. Okay, this has got me slightly excited. I'm going to connect it up to my computer, put the Doom font on here, and see if it'll work. So we'll just plug it in. Oh, did you see that? And the noise? This is more of an S7 clone than the other thing. Oh, I can't seem to do it. That would have been really cool, though. I mean, I know you can probably root your device and do that, but if you could do it straight out of the box, that would have been really cool, but... Um, no, can't seem to do it. And going online, it just says check the network connection and that's it. Ah, oh, well. It was a bit of excitement while it lasted. Anyways, memo looks like memo. Phone, let's see if we got the um, Samsung test menu. We do. It's very basic, though. Same one on the real deal. So that's interesting. Calculator, we've gone through that. Contacts, I don't see any contacts on here because I've already factory reset this, so all data would be gone. Settings, we'll come back to clock looks more faithful, as I keep saying. The Goo phone just didn't quite cut it, but then again, that was a cheap one-to-one, one-to-one -one in quotes there. We've got gallery there, camera, we'll come back to that as well. In messaging, we have no messages. It looks fairly standard though. Play Store, well, it's gonna ask us to sign into the Play Store, but does it look like Android 5, 6? I said, I'm pretty sure it's running Android 6. Play music, music itself. That really doesn't remind me of Samsung music, but anyways. We have S-Health, which, ooh, perhaps, maybe, does anything do anything? Heart. Ooh, ooh, we can do the heart thing. This is not for clinical or medical. Good to know. Put your hand on the sensor. Well, I'm putting my finger on the sensor, but if you want, I can put my whole hand on there. Phone, what do you want me to do? Please confirm your finger on the sensor. Okay, I will do that then. Here, look. There. You happy? It's going to complain again. I can guarantee it. Oh, come on. Well, the gold one works. I'll try it again. Yep. It's different every time, so, uh, this one works. Stress. Extreme stress. Okay. Try and keep still and quiet. Shh. It's stressful waiting for this to finish. My god, my heart is beating so fast. Holy moly. <sighs> okay. I felt pretty stressed having to sit there and wait for that to finish, so... If you tell me that I'm not stressed out. Thanks, phone. Ah, so is this the program that Scientologists use to test your stress levels when they say free stress test? I see what you guys are doing. As I said, I'll spice in any additional info to see if the gold one does anything else more than this, but at least I can test my stress levels. So, there you go. Um, and Sim Toolkit. That's it. That's all of our apps. That was fairly quick. Alright, well I guess it's now time to jump into settings. Well, Wi-Fi, we're already connected. Bluetooth, you don't need to use that, I don't think. Aeroplane mode, mobile hotspot and tethering, data usage, and more connection settings. Do we have NFC? No, we don't. But we will see our mobile networks to see if we actually have 4G on this. I don't think it's actually 4G, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, well, according to our network selection, it seems to only be 3G, which I guess is better than 2G because I can actually test the call quality on this, so I'll do that very soon. Uh, we'll go through settings first. Smart Manager. Well, that's pretty cool. We've got 93% battery remaining, so if you click that, we've got approximately three hours left. That's always the way on these phones. It's always like, yeah, your phone's going to die in about three hours, so good luck. Uh, storage says we have 64... Hang on, wait, what? I'm sorry, hang on. Available 53.4 gig, but we go to that and it says 32 gig. But my SD card's only 8 gig on top of the 32 gig. You know, I failed math, so I have no idea what's going on there, but uh, there's a bit of trickery going on. 
32 gig with available 26.2 gig, but then back here at 50. Wow, I'm confused. Uh, the RAM though, let's see what the RAM set. Okay, fair, all right. Device security um, just comes up with actual security, which we'll come back to. Uh, let's just clean all. The phone is now replenished. Uh, coming into apps, let's see what we've got in apps. Oh, show system in apps. It says device memory used, 504 megs of RAM. The free is 3.3 gigs. Touch with home, Google app, media. Uh, there's not a lot of stuff going on there, but we'll see all. See if there's anything in here that may stick out. Like sore thumbs. Media tech, that's a good sign. Actually, there's probably a lot of things in here that are a bit iffy. I may have to log into a random Google account on this to do the virus tests and stuff because I want to see if there's any viruses kicking around on here. Why GPS? I think that may be one of them. Oh, the wireless update one. I know that is. I'll still try it and see what it does. Sound and notification. General, silent, meeting, outdoor. Sound enhancement. Ah, look. Our good old friends at MediaTek have hooked us up again with the best order, best loudness, best surround, and lossless BT mode. So we'll have to try headphones and see what it sounds like and see if it enhances our listening experience at all. Display. Brightness level, adaptive brightness, sleep, smart pause, video or pause when the device detects that you're facing away from the screen. We'll have to try that in the YouTube test, actually. There is an always on display. See? It's pretty nifty, I guess. Oh, we can change the clock style. That's pretty cool, but you can't change the uh, background image. Okay. Daydream, font size, font style, when device is rotated and cast screen. That is it. Advanced features. Air browse. Ooh. Turn over to mute pause. Uh, so, when we play BFG Division, I should be able to just turn it over and it'll shut up. I can't say that about BFG Division, that's rude. I want to try Air Browse as well. Oh yeah, it works. Yep, that works a lot better than the Goofone one. Wallpaper. Let's change it to quite a lot in here, actually. Uh, they're from Android 4, I think. The black hole one, Bubbles, Hollow Spire, and all that sort of stuff. I think that's from Android 4. I think we'll keep this wallpaper. Maybe this one. That's just a mirrored one, is it? No, it's the same one. I'll do that one. Okay, lock screen and security. Okay, we'll do that again. Lock screen and security. Screen lock. We have fingerprint. We've got to try fingerprint. Come on. Don't have to set a password. Yep, okay. Oh, we can choose a password. All right, let's see if it works. Okay. It's fake. Yeah, well, at least it has a fake fingerprint sensor than none at all on the Goo phone, so gotta give it credit somewhere. Otherwise, in lock screen security, everything else is pretty much all the usual. Unknown sources is on, so that's all good. Nothing in privacy and safety. Accessibility has pretty much the usual crap in it. Accounts, we can add an account. Let's see what we can add. Oh, there's our lovely Samsung account that we can't add to it. Well, I shouldn't be saying that you can add a Samsung account because this is clearly not supposed to be a one-to-one -one of an S7. It's supposed to be an Explore phone that just happens to look like an S7. Backup of reset looks pretty much like Android 6 TouchWiz. Language and input, battery, we've seen that before. It's dying very quickly. Storage. See, 32 gigs. We will investigate that later on. Date and time, it's all good. Help and about phone. So let's do the wireless update and see what it does. Oh, my system's currently up to date. S205, YS and EN version 0 0.01. So early build, but okay. Here we have model number S7, Android version 6.0.1. Kernel version build number, and custom built version. August 12th, 2016 is the kernel version, so that coincides with the actual S7 release, doesn't it? I believe it does. We'll check the Easter egg. Lollipop. Okay, I thought it was Marshmallow. Well, there you go. Lollipop. Hey, there we go. Whee! You know, out of all the times I've tried to play this Easter egg, I cannot do it for the life of me. I say that. Really? 
well that's the highest score I've ever gotten. In status we seem to actually have a unique serial number, so I'll check to see on the gold one if it's the same as that or not. And in sim status the mobile network type is HSPA, which is 3G. So unfortunately it does not do 4G as far as I know. It says we can toggle 3G and 4G in mobile network settings, but it seems to only be 3G only. Well I think we should test the core quality on this thing and see what it's like. And also you can see the sub keys here. The LEDs are a little bit brighter than the Goo Phone one. Once the LEDs go out, you can barely see the keys. Whereas on the real deal, you can always see them. Okay, so this does make and receive calls, so that's a pass from me. The phone is getting extremely hot. And like, obviously because of all the fingerprints, my hands are sweating from it all. Because it's really, really hot. Especially down this side here. Really, really hot. Alright, let's try some other apps. So we'll go with the camera. And open that up. And as you can see we have camera and it actually seems to have some sort of EIS because it doesn't seem as shaky sort of holding it just there it seems fairly good so if we go into settings it says that we have a 12 megapixel camera that's a lie anti-shake voice capture face detection we got the ISO settings as well exposure color effect scene mode white balance so we've got the pro settings on here it's just in settings obviously uh, there's the EIS there and the video quality we can set to fine as well. Now I've already done the camera test, I've done it with both this one and the gold one. This one has a really weird problem. With the front camera, while trying to focus on an object, it makes this really horrible noise. But on the gold one, it kind of did it and then it didn't do it. So I'm going to splice in photos and videos from both devices and we'll see the difference. Except this one I had EIS and all that sort of stuff on, with the gold one I had nothing on, just stock default standard settings. So, I'll splice it all in and you can have a look at it all. Alright, testing the rear video camera quality for the Explore S7 device. Start with the frogs as usual. If I do autofocus, that's what happens. If we do pan, it's pretty smooth though. So there might be some EIS going on. It says so in settings, so I imagine it's doing something. Once again, it's late afternoon, but I just wanted to check to see if we have dual microphones working in this thing. I'll be able to see during editing. Stuart's just chilling in the heat. He don't care. He's always happy. Greens are pretty vibrant on this. Look at that. The red's a little bit... Eh. Fun fact, a company quoted me $1,700 to get rid of all of this. That is ridiculous. Okay, testing the front video quality of the Explore S7 device, and it seems okay. Supposed to be 4 megapixels, I think. Is it better than the previous clone? I'm not too sure, but there you go. Alright, testing the rear camera quality of the Explore S7 device. Now this is the gold one, so I'm not too sure how this is going to turn out. But the other one's video quality was quite terrible. It was very jagged and just not really looking good at all. And as with the other one, if you press an autofocus it just goes all dark. Very strange. There's no EIS or anti-shake on, so just panning along. It's fairly smooth to be honest. So I think the EIS may be bullshit. Of course, Stuart is just chilling in the heat. But he's always smiling, which is a good thing. And just going up close to the greenery, you can see the jagged edges. I can see it now. It is focusing, which is good. Otherwise, it's nothing special. Alright, testing the front video quality on the Explore S7 clone. Uh, this is the gold one, because the other one had some problems with autofocusing, and it just started making all these weirdo noises, for the front camera anyway, so... Uh, let's just try with this one. It's a bit strange, but okay. So there you go, that's the photos and videos from this. 
it's not too exciting. Um, but the one thing is when you do the autofocus, it just goes dark all of a sudden, and that's HDR off. And then you do HDR on, but the photos look much better with HDR on, obviously. But the camera itself makes an actual mechanical noise when you toggle HDR on. It's very difficult to hear, but it makes a slight click. Well, when we tear it down, we'll get to see the camera hardware anyways. But otherwise, in camera settings, there's a bunch of other features. As for the beauty mode, though, that really doesn't do anything. It just pretty much makes me look exactly the same. An ugly mug. So, yeah, there you go. That's pretty much the camera. All right, I'm going to do the speaker test and plug in some headphones and see how it sounds. Okay, with my little meter here and BFG Division by Mick Gordon from the 2016 Doom game. I'm not going to mention Doom Eternal because... By the time this video is out, I'm already going to be playing it and enjoying the absolute hell out of it. See what I did there? Anyways, uh, let's see what it sounds like. Well, we got to 98.1, but the speaker doesn't sound that great. It's not that loud and it sounds very muffled. But I'll try some headphones and... Try the enhancements and see if that makes a difference. I'm going to put my headphones right near the mic. I'm going to turn it up full ball, and you're going to hear the settings that I've got it on. Okay, so this is with absolutely nothing on. This is with the audio enhancer on. This is with the audio enhancer off. This is with best loudness on. This is with both of them on. Everything off. This is with surround settings on. Those audio enhancements do absolutely nothing at all, except make our glorious BFG division sound like shit. Oh yeah, let's see if the flip over to silence thing works. I don't think it does. Oh. Okay, so if you do this, you can just skip songs. Alright, fair enough. Alright, well that was very weird, but that's the speaker test done. So let's try YouTube. We don't have the YouTube app on here. Okay, well, let's just open up Chrome then. All right, so we can open up my channel on Chrome. So let's go ahead and play the Human Digi video. I won't say the same thing. I don't think it's playing at 1080p. No, it's playing at 360p. Let's try it at 1080p. Oh, that lag. Okay, so 1080p with YouTube. No. Nope. Let's try 720p. Find out where the fingerprint sensor is connected and take that off. So in order to it's, oh, the back cover, I'm it's to not too bad. So it's I'm reasonable. But notice how the battery life is dropping considerably fast. Yeah, as for YouTube on this thing, yeah, it does work. But you know what I want to do? I want to try games on this. I'll connect up a random Gmail account to this thing. And I can download Avast or Malwarebytes, try that, and put a couple of games on here and see if they run. Just just for the sake of it, really. By memory, this has one gig of RAM. Let me go ahead and do all that, and I shall be back. All right, so I tried to install Call of Duty Mobile. That didn't work. I then tried to install Need for Speed No Limits. That didn't work. So then I defaulted to Minecraft, and that seemed to work. So we'll try Minecraft. It's on live support as well, just in case. Okay, well, it's crashed twice, so I'll just leave it load, I guess. I'll just leave it. Hey, it worked. Okay, cool. Alright, groovy. Alright, let's just play it all on default. Right around here. Is it... Oh, that is almost too hot to touch. Whew. I'll have to hold it like this now. <laughs> just until this is over. It's definitely not 60 FPS. If we look down on the ground, perhaps it is. But, uh... uh it's, it's pretty choppy. You get a couple of good frames in there, and it just drops. If 
you don't mind the lag, it's very good. But then again, honestly, I don't see anyone else having this exact same device and trying to use this as daily driver. But prove me wrong, if anyone else has an Explore phone, please let me know down in the comments because that would be very interesting to see. But anyways, Minecraft does work. It's just very unplayable at 10 FPS. All right, well, let's go ahead and try Malwarebytes and see if it comes up with anything. The wireless update will probably come up as a virus, but we'll see. All right, I'll leave it scan and do its thing and see if it comes up with anything. Okay, well, I don't think we'll be doing a virus scan because it's been scanning Geekbench for the last, like, 10 minutes now, and it hasn't moved. Let's just assume that it's okay. And it's made it severely laggy as well, so I'm going to uninstall it. Alrighty, well, I definitely don't have any high hopes for this device now, so let's go ahead and run the applications. Let's start with Geekbench and see what that comes up with. Geekbench 5 did not work as well, so I had to do Geekbench 4. Sorry. MT6580. We've seen this one before, haven't we? So I'll run the CPU benchmark for this and see what it comes up with. It's obviously not going to be the same as a Geekbench 5 score, so we'll just have to take it for what it is. Okay, the scores have come back with 427 for single core and 1,226 for the multi-core. I will spice in a picture of the actual S7 specs, and I do have a US variant of the device, which is running a Snapdragon 820, so just keep that in mind. But otherwise, the system info says that we have only one gig of RAM. We're running Android 6.0.1, but we had a lollipop Easter egg, so okay. Model is Android S7. It's the MediaTek MT6580 with one processor and four cores at 1.3 gigahertz. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So now I guess we're gonna run the actual spec applications and see which ones lie and which ones tell the truth. A lot of comments I do get for showing the specs on these devices is to try A to 64 or I to 64. So we'll open that up first. All right, so system. We have Android S7, Android S7, MT6580, S7. Oh, we don't have a Unix serial number. It's uh, 01234567898 ABCDF. Installed RAM 4 gig, available memory 3 gig, total internal space 32 gig. Yeah. Yeah, I don't trust this. I think I do trust that it has a MediaTek MT6580 in here, which is a quad core. The display is 720 by 1280 the Mali 400 MP renderer, so that's better than the Goo phone being 480p, but that's if the screen resolution is actually 720p or not. In battery, it doesn't say anything. In network, it does show that we are running HSPA, which is 3G. There we go, Android version 5.1 Lollipop, which the API level is 22, and otherwise, nothing much else. The thermal though, yeah, it's, it's getting a little hot. CPU's at 45 degrees, so that's Celsius and um, something there is at 59 degrees. That explains why it's so damn hot at the top of the device. Sensors, accelerometer, proximity, and a light sensor, that's it. So coming into apps on here, it says that we have Baidu installed, iReader, Tencent Video, UC, some other ones, a lot of Chinese apps that I didn't quite see installed on here, so they may be hidden deep within the system of this thing. Yeah, okay, Ida64 does show some things, but we'll see what the others have to say. Okay, well, Antutu is fairly useless. All right, let's try CPU-Z. MediaTek MT6580, 1.3 gigahertz, quad-core, S7, Android, hardware, Snapdragon 620, yeah, 2560 by 1440, with four gigs of RAM, yeah, no. All right, we'll try the next one. Android S7, model is an S7, in brackets, S7. MT6580, 6.0.1, but then it says Lollipop, so we know that it is running Lollipop. System on chip, it is a MT6580 with four cores active. It still reckons we have 32 gigs of storage. Hmm, okay. Yeah, four gigs of RAM though. 4.6 inches, the screen size, and no, that's 5.1. Screen resolution, 720p. Battery has nothing good in it. CPU temperature, 63 degrees Celsius, holy moly. Back camera says 12 megapixel. And the front says 5 megapixel. Let's try Droid Info and see what that says. Okay, 720p, yes. Four cores, yes. Okay, there we go. That's more like it. Internal is 5.1 gig with available 3.5 gig. And it came up on my computer with this here. So, conclusion, we have 8 gigs of storage in this thing. Camera says 13 megapixels. And then the front is 4.9, which is incorrect for sure. And then features, yep. Thermal, yep. It's pretty hot. Battery, doesn't say anything. In all that mumble jumble there, I think I have a rough idea what the specs are. I don't know what the cameras are though. I would say it's probably gonna be five megapixel rear and two megapixel front, but we'll see in the teardown, I'll look on the flex ribbons and see what codes they have on them. So I think for this device, all up, 
It's better than the Goo Phone S7. It does improve a lot of things. It does kind of feel like Android 6.0 TouchWiz experience. While it's not trying to be an S7, it is ripping off the S7, of course. They've just stuck Explorer on it. But look, it's a pretty low end device. One gig of RAM, eight gigs of storage, MediaTek MT6580 quad core. Nothing out of the ordinary. Probably a really generic board that's in here that they've just repurposed on several different phones and then this company's bought it, put their own name on it and went, problem solved, let's sell 5,000 of them, which they obviously never did because I have numbers 941 and 903, was it? I can't even remember the numbers now. But anyways, uh, look, it's an average device for 50 bucks. That's Australian. Made for a good review though. And having it still work two years later is also amazing because sometimes I get clones that work and then I try them a couple of weeks later and then they just completely just don't work anymore. So... It's good that this still works. I've done the picture test. I've run the apps to check the specs on this. I've done everything that I need to, I believe. So I think now it is time to tear it down and possibly kill it. But I have done the tear down on the gold one, but I just can't remember how, what, what, what happened there? Yeah, I've done the tear down on the gold one, but I can't really remember what went on with that one. So we'll tear this one down instead. I've had to clean this back cover so many times during this video, I have lost count because of my hands just sweating and it just, yeah. So let's take the back cover off. Oh, that didn't work. I'm pretty sure it's just glued down into place and that's it, but it's plastic. So it's not gonna crack or break or anything. It should be fine. Now I don't have to be super careful here because it's a pla, oh shit, okay. Now I was saying that I don't have to be super careful with this because it's a plastic back. Uh, whoops. Can we make a clear phone out of it? Oh, yeah, okay, you can. Aha. Uh -huh. I see what they've done. Oh, shit. Well, there you go. That's interesting. It's just a laminated piece of plastic over a piece of plastic to, say, the Explore logo. So I can clean that up and it'll be this nice... textured sort of one. So that's pretty cool. Safe to say I've ruined the back cover, but at least it doesn't say Explorer anymore. We have an R new 1600 milliamp hour battery, which is not that surprising. But look at that, this battery is also serviceable, so we can take this out. We can also see the metal frame keeps on going around as well. So once we take the motherboard out, we'll see what's underneath it. Let me go ahead and take some flex ribbons out and get this battery out of here, I think. Why don't we go ahead and take the battery out first in the most safest way possible? There we go, safe. For some reason, I'm getting vibes that this is the Goofone S7, just with a more updated motherboard maybe because the speaker and the coin style vibration motor location and all that sort of stuff just kind of all matches up with the previous one. All right, well, the battery was nice and easier to get out, so that wasn't too bad, but yeah, I'll have to Google that and see if anything comes up for that. And there's all the integrated circuits there as well. Paper thin, but it uh, sort of still works. The date code seems to be um, the 9th, 2016 if that's a date code there anyways. So there's the back of the LCD there and we can see the metal frame, which is a little tiny bit thicker than the Goo phone, but we've got the metal construction going around the actual device. Whereas that just had a plastic frame and metal just only on top of the screen really. So this does improve a little bit. Flipping up the speaker, we can see our charging board here, our micro USB port, our microphone, a signal wire, and we have a soldered on flex ribbon there, so if anything were to happen, you wouldn't be able to replace this, not like you'd want to anyways, and I might be the only person in the world that has this Explore phone. I'd assume that there'd be several generics out there that would have the same motherboard in this, but there you go, the home button's connected to this, everything's basically connected to that, headphone jack, etc, etc. Alright, so taking five screws off gets us access to the motherboard, basically. But we'll remove the plastic cover first, which doesn't have anything. It's very plain, very dull. And then we have our plain motherboard, which, yeah, that's looking pretty much like the Goo phone, except the buttons are actually on the board this time, and there's a flex ribbon that's directly soldered just there. I'll try my best to take this out as best as I can, though. But I have a feeling that's a display flex right there, so I better be really careful. No, that's not the display connector. That's the front camera. Whoops. Alrighty, so the motherboard is removed and the flex ribbon was actually underneath the board, so I didn't damage that, I don't think, but that's a little Lego style connector. Hole for our front camera, our earpiece, which is pretty small. There's a random flex ribbon here, I'd say that'd be for the digitizer, most likely anyways. 
Um, but otherwise, it's got the metal frame around it, and then it does have a bit of a frame going on in here, but it's basically just got this skeleton of a metal frame left in here. But still, it's structurally more sound than the Goo phone, at least. All right, well, let's have a look at the guts. All right, well, we'll just let the speaker dangle off. That's fine. There's our front camera there, which we'll investigate soon. It appears we don't have a secondary microphone up the top. That just seems to be just a little signal connector. Our dual SIM and SD card area. But they're the two that we want to have a look at the most. We do have a couple of codes on here. It does say MB6580, which would correspond to the MediaTek MT6580 chipset. So it doesn't really tell us the... RAM and the flash in that, but I'm going to take this sticker off and see the chip underneath here. It's very generic. I'll take a photo of that and Google it and then splice in any additional info I can find. There's our MediaTek MT6580 right there. Well, as for the cameras though, the front camera, I don't see any codes on and I can't take it out because it's soldered directly onto the motherboard. I guess we'll just assume it's a two megapixel one. I'd say it is anyways. I mean, look at, look at the size. It's, yeah. The rear camera though, does have a little bit of movement to it, a teeny bit amount, but nothing that qualifies for having OIS. But as for codes, we have JC886-06A0251, so I'll have to Google that and see what it comes up with. Sorry for the really janky footage, but I'm editing the video right now and I just decided to disassemble the gold phone really quickly. Now the code that's on the camera for the black device came up with nothing. However, the code for the camera in the gold one came up with HS-IMX145, which is actually a Sony Exmor R IMX145 8 megapixel sensor, which was featured on the iPhone 4S back in 2011, repurposed in these, because why not? So that same camera is in that one. I've tried this one, in that one, and that one, in that one, and they're both exactly the same. Also, there's a 1700 milliamp hour battery in the gold one, as opposed to the 1600 in the black one. So that's a bit strange, but otherwise, everything's exactly the same. Except the soldering job just here. I mean, it's a lot better than I'd do. Well, at this point in time, I have parts everywhere all over my desk. I have a rough idea of what's going on, so I'm going to go ahead and put it all back together, show you the specs of this thing, and call this a video, and call this a conclusion to this little series that I've done. Okay, I've put it back together, but the home button doesn't work, so I'll just pull it apart again and see if I can fix it. I'll let you know during editing if I can fix it or not. But otherwise, if you want to learn the specs of it, feel free to pause here and read through it all. And of course, just go check up on GSM Arena if you want to see the real specifications of the real deal S7. But otherwise, this isn't anything special. And uh, the back cover mod looks really good, doesn't it? It's still got a shimmery shine to it. Probably should have left the plastic on it, but that's okay. But anyways, there's not really much else to say about this device. It's just a random, generic, unbranded S7 clone that someone's put Explore on it. And I've ended up with two of them, and I've reviewed both of them. One in the past, and one now, and... Well, at least it's better than the Goo phone. So I don't know why they would have rolled these out in 2016 or 2017 to some random company, or the Explore company, and... They would have used these as company phones on the cheap. I have no idea. I really do not know. But I don't know much else of a backstory except from the guy who drove the station wagon that had all the phones in the back of it that I picked through. But anyways, that wraps up this two-part series on these S7 clones that I have had laying around for a couple of years now. I finally looked at them with this new setup. While this video may not have looked as pretty as I wanted it to, it was still in-depth, which is what I wanted. And I got to show you guys just some random S7 clones. But don't worry though, I have many more clones to show you all. I have a couple of Apple ones that I want to show you guys next. But I've got a couple of uploads here and there, so stay tuned for those ones. Steady upload pace, we're almost at 20k now. Just provide an entertainment out there for people that might be stuck at home in this current situation. I hope that I'm giving you guys a bit of entertainment and a bit of time to kill during a day of not really doing much. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really, really do appreciate it. And once again, just be good people. Just take care of one another. Stay safe. Just have a laugh. Just relax and chill. I know tough times are going on right now, but just take a deep breath. You are okay. Be positive. And if you're not feeling okay, just remember to just talk to someone. Talking to someone and expressing how you're feeling can really make a difference, you know, in your mental health and well-being. And that's definitely helped me in a number of times where my mental health has just been peaking really high and I don't know what to do. I talk to someone and it slowly comes down. It 
may not work for everybody, but if you are not coping, there are plenty of other services out there that will help you if you don't feel like talking to a friend or something, talk with a professional and see how you feel. But um, as always, mental health is a really big subject and I like to touch on it because I suffer from mental health issues and it's always something that I really want to address with you guys is that, you know, these videos are purely for entertainment and I love doing it. But at the end of the day, once that camera shuts off, you know, I've got my own problems to deal with and you guys have your own problems to deal with and I just want everyone to live their life as best as they can, enjoy any moment you can and altogether just embrace positivity and sometimes changes are for the better. If you are going through some pretty tough times at the moment and you're watching this video right now listening to this, I hope I am making you feel better. I'm a random stranger on the internet telling you, you know, to just take it easy and stuff. I just want everyone to be positive with one another don't fight and argue with one another and stuff. You know, it's not worth it at the end of the day. So please take care of one another. Be good people. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be more tech. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.